Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel and welcome to part four of building your own AVR or Arduino Internet of Things board. So in part four, we're going to get into the PCB design. In part three, I said, we're going to use Eagle. I recommend downloading it. So we're going to go into part four. We're going to dive right into Eagle and we're going to assume that you have a basic understanding of Eagle. So let's get started. So here we are at the Eagle control panel. I named my PCB design for this project AVR IoT board. You can see it's already open by the green, the green circle. So first let's start off with the schematic and this is going to be the same schematic I showed you in part three, except one key difference. Over here I made a slight change. So remember we talked about how I put these pins with jumpers that we can use jumpers for to uh, isolate the Bluetooth, the BLE module, from the rest of the design. One thing I didn't put in, though, was one for the VCC, or the, or the power pin. And I kind of figured, well, I have it for the serial, I have it for reset, I should have it for VCC. So I added that, and that's right here. So that's the only update or change from Part 3. Now, one thing I didn't mention in Part 3 is, you know, all these other pins around here represent the Arduino, Arduino header pins that you see on the Uno, or the other Arduino boards. So that's where these other pins are going. A lot of these parts are where, what I got from what I'll call standard Eagle libraries. But some of the parts, and for instance, the BLE Micro, I made myself. So for instance, if we go into the parts folder, and I already have it open, uh, I made this library, the BLE Micro module. Okay, and then I also have a, another one called Forstronics, where I made a lot of my pin headers, the DC jack. I also have an NR24 in there from other projects. And so, for instance, all these pin headers are, are, are parts that I made. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the files for my Eagle design, so you could just load them and use them if you want. If you want to change them, though, at the end, I'll provide you a list of the parts I used from the Eagle libraries, I'll also link in with all these files that I'll have posted on my blog, my libraries, my custom library parts that I made if you want to access those. So that's the schematic. Let's jump to the board. Ta-da! So here is the PCB layout from the schematic. One thing I'll point out right away, so just to give you a bearing, here is the Atmega 328P chip. Here's the headers, so here's, here's uh, D0, the digital pins, and then here's the analog pins and sort of the power pins, and this is all laid out with, with standard Arduino spacing for the headers and, and such. Now the board itself is a little longer than the Uno. I made it longer so I could fit all this other stuff on there, but the headers themselves and, and this length, the width, is the standard Arduino lengths. So this is a two-layer board. The blue runs are bottom runs and the, the uh, red runs are top runs, of course. Here we have the BLE Micro, of course. Here we have the 317, our regulator chip. Here we have the power jack. Uh, I don't know how much of these I'm going to walk through, but these thicker traces have to do with power. So you can see thicker here, the VCC, all these VCC lines I made a little thicker than the standard trace run. Here is where I, I isolate the power from the rest of the board. So there'll be a jumper here. And here's my other jumpers to isolate the BLE micro, including the transmit receive for serial communication, the reset, and the VCC. Right here is my solderless breadboard. So if we zoom in on that, I talked about this in part three. Here, these will be each uh, the spacing of a solderless breadboard these are basically going to be uh, two by four pinholes I'll have two of them next to each other and you can see that these two are all sh both shorted together so that they'll all be the same and then these two on this side are sorted together so you can use this to put sensors or transducers or whatever in there without having to solder them into your board so it sort of makes it flexible for prototyping now this side is going to be tied to ground and then this side is going to be tied to VCC, so you actually have power and ground access in this little sort of solderless breadboard area. Let me actually hit this so we can kind of see the ground plane. 
So now you can see the, uh, the blue and, and red ground plane for the PCB board. Uh, just some other stuff I'll quickly point out before I talk about how to create the Gerber files and how to get this, uh, get this made. These are the pins that are going to be for the FTDI cable. And I just noticed I don't have labels on them, so I'm going to add labels to them. But this is where you can do the, the programming from the Arduino IDE. Uh, here is the resonator. I wanted that close to the Arduino chip. You can see I have all these runs pushed over so we can make room for the solderless breadboard. Here is the 1K resistors that go between the serial communication for the micro board and the 328P. Here's my 10K resistor for the reset circuit. You know, here's the switch. Here is my inductor that's going to be filtering noise from the ADC. Here is two resistors. One is for the, uh, the 317 circuit, the LM317 circuit. The other one is just for the LED that shows we have power on, and here is the LED. Here is the input capacitor for the power jack, or the I'll say VN. Right here is the energy reservoir, the one microfarad capacitor for the output of, of the, uh, the regulator. Okay, so there is our PCB design. Our next step, oh, I'll point out one other thing. Here's the pins to sort of access some of the pins off the BLE. And if you notice, the I cut the ground plane out here. So here all around we have the ground plane for making good ground connections. But I cut it out here because the reason is, is the antenna for the BLE micro board is here. And I want to keep the ground plane away from the antenna so it can still get signals. If not, the ground plane will sort of shield the antenna from from the uh, the wireless signal so that's why i have it cut out of that section so let's talk about generating the gerber files so if we want to generate the gerber files and the gerber files excuse me the gerber files are what we need to get this board made by a pcb manufacturer so i'm going to go up to here to the cam processor this is going to bring up uh, a, the cam processor window and I'm going to go to File, Open, and I'm going to go to Job. I'm going to create a job. Now, this is going to bring me to my CAM files in my Eagle program files. And, you know, you use various ones for various things. I won't go into it. But this special one is not one that I actually made, it, and it's not one that comes with Eagle. These other ones come with Eagle. But this one I got off the Internet, and it's good for two-layer boards, and it's going to create the boards we need. Uh, to do the manufacturing so I'll include this in my file that I'll link to on my blog but I'm going to press open that's going to generate all the what I'll say the the Gerber files I need for my top copper my bottom copper my top silk screen top solder mask bottom solder mask and drill file so all of them have a, a different file so we're gonna have six different files that we're gonna need to send to our PCB manufacturer so what I'm gonna do from here is just say process job and I haven't saved so I'll press yes so process the job now I'm gonna go to my folder and there's a lot of files in here but I can easily spot the Gerber one so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna name this FT uh, O T Gerber so that's where I'm going to put my Gerber files, and I can spot them by the the, uh, the file names. So here's one of them, GBS. Here's another, uh, GTL, GTL is another, GTO, and then GTS. And there's one last one, and that's going to be the text file which is the, actually the drill file so I'm just gonna I'll actually cut that and I will just paste it in here so the reason I separated them is we want something we can send the manufacturer because they just want the Gerber files they don't want all these other files so I created a folder I'm then going to uh, uh, just zip it up so there's my Gerber files you can use any PCB manufacturer you want. Basically, the larger the quantity, the cheaper it's going to be. And some manufacturers, if you're doing a very small quantity, it can be quite expensive. So I found one 
that actually is a maker company. This company, DF Robot, they actually do PCB manufacturing for makers, and it's actually fairly cheap. So if I go to store, go to their manufacturing service, click on PCB service. Once again, you can use whoever you want. I'm just showing an example with DF Robot. So I'm going to go for their two layer PCB 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. And basically this will give me 10 boards for $23, which is pretty good. So here we are. I'm just going to get a quantity of one. You know, these I go for the 50% because it's free. Thickness, I typically go 1.2 millimeters. Surface finish, if you want lead free, you can get it for more money. I'm not going to worry about that. Silk screen. So the green silk screen is free. If you want to get something more exciting than green, it's more money. For instance, blue, if you want it to look like an Arduino board. You know what? I'm going to go, I'm going to go with yellow just for the heck of it. Process time, I'm just going to let do the normal time, quantity. You can see their quantities, of course, you know, they get cheaper as you do more. I'm just going to go for the 10, which is just going to be $23. All these others add $23 to it. Uh, here we go. And then from here, you would just add it to your cart and check out. Now, the way you actually transfer your Gerber files to them is you email them. So after you order, you email them. Uh, and I think they tell you somewhere, oh yeah, they tell you right here that in your email subject, you know, put this information, put your order number. So that's what we're going to do. So you order it, you then email, and then you put that zip folder in this email that you send to them. So that's how you order the PCB. And that's exactly what I'm going to do after I'm done with this video. So we'll be ready for part five, where I'm going to solder my pieces on, test my board. So remember, we're doing this in real time, so there could be a mistake on the board. I don't think there is because I've checked it, but who knows? Now, I'm going to tell you one, more, one other thing before I move on, and that is when I, when I link these files, you want to add my schematic and my board if you want to leverage that. The way you do that in Eagle is you just create a new project, name it, you know, what, whatever you want, and then you have this empty project. And what you could do then is the files that I'll link, you take the board file, excuse me, I'll just show it here, the board file and the schematic file, and you just put them into this empty folder that you'll find in your Eagle folder that'll be in your My Documents or your documents, depending on what operating system you're using. And then once they're in there, you can open it up and it'll be part of that, that project. So that's how you can transfer it. Now for the libraries, if you leverage the, the custom libraries I sent you, you can just, one way to add them to your libraries is to just go to the Eagle program files, which will be on your C drive for a Windows system, and then find the library folder, which will be LBR, and just add those files into the library folder, and it'll add them to Eagle. Okay, so the Eagle parts and libraries. So, like I mentioned, you can take my board files and just use them as is if you want uh, and generate the same board I'm doing. If you want to, to change it up a bit, feel free. And what I'm providing here is information on the parts I used if you want to you know, build it up yourself. Here I list the part and then I list the library that I got it from as well as the device name in the library to grab it from. In some cases, there's sub-libraries. So here it's in the linear library and then I have an arrow star 317 and then there's the device now one warning is most of these libraries come in eagle when you download it some of them like i think this spark fun one and possibly the adafruit one if i can find that here it is for the resonator the spark fun one i know doesn't come with it and I'm, I'm not sure about the adafruit it may or may not but anyway just just search spark fun eagle libraries and you'll find it and you just add it to your libraries and they'll have instructions on how to add it so these are the libraries i used here's the parts i made and so what i'll do is i'll put these files in the files that i link for download so this will be in the same folder that i have my project in and and so on and so forth and you know what i'll just put in the gerber files too but i'll link these on my blog but 
here's in, in this library I have all my different headers and pinholes that I used in the, the DC PowerJack and in this other folder I have the BLE micro so feel free to leverage this okay that's it for part four I'm excited I'm gonna put my PCB order in get it back and I'm excited to build up this board in part five if you like what you saw here subscribe to my Forstronics YouTube channel all the information or the the stuff I, I covered today or the files will be on my blog and I'll see you back here for part five Thank you for watching.